Do you feel trapped in a life that no longer fits who you are or who you want to be? You're not alone. Many of us would love a fresh start, a chance to rebrand and start over, but how do we begin? Well, welcome to your reinvention era. In this video, we are going to break the journey down into manageable steps. I have a six step process that I am going to walk you through because it is time to stop wondering what if and time to start living your life the way you want to. Now, if you've watched me here on YouTube before, then welcome back. But if you are new to my channel, then welcome. I am Dr. Kim Foster and I'm an MD turned coach and wellness expert. Now let's get into my six step process for reinventing yourself. Starting with step one, identify exactly what you want to change. This is one of the most crucial steps to reinventing yourself, defining who you want to be and getting super clear on exactly what you want to change. Now, this is not just about setting goals. It's about envisioning a completely new identity for yourself. Let's start with what I like to call a life audit. This process involves getting just brutally honest with yourself. You need to really look at your life and decide which aspects you love and want to keep and which parts you are ready to change. Now, some of the questions that you need to ask yourself are, what habits do I need to change? What beliefs are holding me back? Am I in the career that I want? Do my relationships support my growth? So grab a notebook or open a document on your computer and answer these questions as honestly as you can, and then keep going, just examining all the areas of your life. This is not the time for modesty or for pulling punches. It's time for real, raw honesty with yourself. So once you have a clear picture of where you're at right now, it's time to shift your focus and then imagine your future self. Think about how you want to feel, what you want to be doing, and who you want to be around. This is so that you can make decisions from the perspective of your future self, not your past self. This is a really powerful mindset shift that allows you to step into the shoes of the person that you want to become. Now, as tempting as it can be to want to change absolutely everything, that is not what I recommended. You will get much more traction if you just choose one area to focus on. For now, once you have successfully executed a reinvention of one element of your life, then you can, of course, move on and work on the next element but if you try to make too many changes all at once, it's just gonna be way too difficult and you're going to end up doing nothing. So just start with one area, choose that area now. Is it going to be your professional life, your health, your style, your social life? Choose the one that feels the most important right now. And also, if this is the first time that you have tried to reinvent yourself, then choose an area that feels doable. Maybe not the biggest hurdle, maybe something where you have some confidence confidence that this is something that you can actually do, which will prove to yourself that you can do this. And then you can move on to the bigger, maybe more intimidating areas of your life. I have executed a lot of reinventions in my own life, some of them just small and some of them really, really big. For example, when I completely changed my career and stopped being a doctor and instead launched and grew my own coaching business, that was a big change that took quite some time to execute, but it definitely started with getting super honest and very clear about myself about where I was, why it wasn't working for me, and what I actually wanted my professional life to look like and to feel like. Okay, so let's move on to step two, which is to eliminate your blocks. And here we're going to confront one of the biggest obstacles to reinvention, our own fears. So here's the deal, your primitive mind does not want you to change. And that's because our primitive mind prioritizes survival. And it knows that whatever we have done up to this point has ensured our survival because we're here alive. But if we change something, there's no guarantee that we will survive that change. Basically, your primitive mind perceives the unknown as a threat. So reinventing ourselves means that we have to move beyond this instinct because you will not be able to get started with your reinvention if you allow all of your fears to hold you back. Now the primitive mind can be really sneaky and it desperately doesn't want us to do this unknown thing, to change something. But in order to stop us from making the change, it doesn't always create typical feelings of fear. It comes at us with very rational sounding arguments. It tells us this isn't going to work or you're not ready for this, or you're too old for this, or people will judge you for this. 
sound familiar? So you need to be smarter than your primitive brain. You need to not be duped by these excuses. You need to learn to see them for what they are, which is just your primitive mind trying to keep you in your comfort zone and keep you in that safety zone. So that's the first key thing is to really see these stories for what they actually are, just stories designed to prevent you from changing and taking risks and then getting honest with yourself about what is really underneath it. What are you really afraid of? And then confronting that fear. So ask yourself, what am I actually afraid of here? Is it a fear of failure, a fear of being judged, or even a fear of success? Then we need to confront these fears, really drag them out of the closet or out from under the bed and look them in the eye and challenge them. Often just the act of naming and identifying your fear has an amazingly neutralizing effect. Really crucial here is not expecting your fears to just go away completely. You don't need to wait until you don't feel afraid anymore to move forward. Susan Jeffers wrote a terrific book in the 80s called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that is exactly what you need to do. Don't wait until you don't feel afraid because that's just not going to happen. Feel the fear and do it anyway. If you want some more guided support with this piece in particular, then I have put together a workbook that is called Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life. And it walks you through a series of prompts that are designed to help you just uncover your blocks and move forward. And you can just download that workbook for free. Just go ahead and click the link in the description of this video. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, which I like to call the yellow brick road rule. Just as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz discovered, the path to transformation is as significant as the destination itself. It's not just about reaching the Emerald City, it's about what we learn and how we grow along the way. So on your reinvention journey, I know that you are going to be focusing on the Emerald City. It's what we do and it's a good thing. You have a vision of your destination, your new identity, where you want to end up. Maybe it's the totally fit physique or it's a fantastic new career that makes you feel so fulfilled and also gives you a ton of financial freedom. You know, whatever the destination is, you've got it firmly planted in your mind. But now that you've got it clearly in mind, you need to detach from it and instead focus on the yellow brick road. You need to embrace the journey. In the Wizard of Oz movie, about two thirds of that film is all about Dorothy's adventures as she travels along the yellow brick road. And only a really small proportion is actually in the Emerald City. All the good stuff, to be honest, happens on the road, that's where she encounters all her new friends, the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman and the Cowardly Lion. And it's where she learns all the powerful lessons about herself and the world and where she overcomes all the various obstacles. She does all her growing up on that road and it's a once in a lifetime journey that she takes. I like to imagine Dorothy as a 90 year old woman at the end of her life reflecting back and I bet all her best and most profound memories would be the adventures that she had on the yellow brick road. Not just the destination, the Emerald City, but everything that happened to her while she was journeying to get there. So that's what you need to do too. Yes, you have your destination, but to get there, you're going to need to embrace the journey because when you only focus on the destination and you view the journey as a chore and something to just kind of get through, that's when you are going to give up. Anything worth achieving is going to take some time, but in order to stay in the game, you're going to need to find ways to truly enjoy the journey, not just grit your teeth to get through it. Keep moving forward, keep finding ways to savor the journey and celebrate the small milestones along the way. That's what will keep you moving forward. Okay, so that brings me to step four, which is to expect obstacles. Now, just as Dorothy encountered challenges on her way to the Emerald City, we are going to need to anticipate obstacles as we work toward our new selves. You will definitely face some barriers and some challenges and some setbacks. It's just an inevitable part of any journey, especially one as significant as personal transformation. So obstacles can be like those trees that throw apples and the flying monkeys on the yellow brick road. They are unexpected, unnerving, and seemingly out of our control. So how do we handle these obstacles when they come up? First of all, accept that they are just part of the process. By expecting challenges, we prevent ourselves from becoming too discouraged when they actually do occur. It's not a sign that you should give up. It's a sign that you are pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone. And that's exactly where growth happens. Next, embrace problem solving. As Marie Forleo says, 
everything is figure outable. Each challenge is just another opportunity to learn and adapt and grow stronger. Approach each obstacle with the mindset that there is a solution and it's your responsibility to find it. This isn't just about overcoming hurdles, it's about taking ownership of your journey. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And how can this challenge make me better? And most importantly, keep moving forward. Persistence is key. When those apple trees got really mean and started throwing apples, Dorothy didn't turn back, she kept going. So use the resources at your disposal, whether it's seeking advice from mentors or reading up on similar experiences or simply taking some time to strategize your next steps. Okay, let's move on to step five, find real support. So here's the truth. As you work on reinventing yourself and changing your life, this is going to be really confronting for some of the people in your life. Yes, hopefully you'll inspire some people, but not everyone in your current circle will understand or appreciate the new direction that you are taking. And that is perfectly okay. When you start changing your life and leveling up, it can be challenging for some of the people around you. They might feel insecure about their own lives or perhaps they're afraid of losing the relationship that they have with you. It's a natural response and it's important to approach this with empathy and understanding. However, trying to convert everyone to your way of thinking or to join you on your journey isn't just impractical, it can be emotionally exhausting. Remember, you're not responsible for anyone else's growth. You're responsible for yours. Instead of attempting to bring everyone along, focus on curating a core group of supporters. These are the people who genuinely understand and encourage your dreams and ambitions. They are the ones who are gonna cheer you on when you succeed and lift you up when you falter. So how do you find these people? Well, start by looking for qualities in others that align with your new values and goals. And these might be new acquaintances who are on a similar path or existing friends who have shown consistent support and understanding. Try to engage in communities, both online and offline, that resonate with your new interests and aspirations. And don't forget to be this kind of support for others too. True support is reciprocal. It's about building and nurturing relationships that are based on mutual growth and respect. Okay, let's move on to the sixth and final step, which is to leverage your success. This step is all about recognizing and celebrating the evidence of the changes that you have made and using this to strengthen your self-trust even further, which will help you to form a springboard to keep going to the next level. Remember, this reinvention will not be the last change that you make in your life, but it sets a powerful precedent for future transformations. So as you implement changes and start seeing results, make sure sure that you take some time to reflect on what you've learned. Each step that you have successfully navigated, each obstacle that you've overcome, it all adds to a growing body of proof that not only is change possible for you, but you are also getting better at it with each iteration. This isn't just about celebrating, it's about the profound impact of accumulating experiences that boost your belief in yourself. Focusing on what you've learned and accomplished helps you to hone your self-trust and your intuition, and that is what will continue to guide you forward. I wanna leave you with this final thought. The perfect time to start is now. Don't wait for the right moment. Trust me, it never arrives. Every minute that you spend waiting is a minute that you could spend growing. So I encourage you to take the first step today, even if it's small, your future self will thank you. And again, if you do want some more help with getting started, download my free workbook called Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life. Just click the link in the description box below. Now, I would love to hear about your plans for reinvention. Go ahead and share your thoughts and your questions in the comments below. I read everyone, even if I'm not able to respond to everyone and I'm here to support you. And if you're looking for more insights on making transformative changes, I think that you are going to enjoy the video that I'm going to share on the very next screen where I reveal the five daily habits that have the power to change your life. I will see you over there. Okay, so let's move on to step, no, fix the hair. All right, go back. That is where she encounters all her, <laughs> <laughs> nice voice. True support is reciprocal. <laughs> reciprocal. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, we're good. <laughs>